everyone. So we are now to discover all right, uh, more of what development is as we move to the topic two of our unit two in child and adolescent learning principles. All right. So if you were to look at the title of the topic as flashed on screen right now, this actually speaks of the stages of development and development task. So prelude to this lesson, I asked you guys to accomplish an activity that would um, let you trace how you have developed from age to age as much as uh, you have still copies of your pictures when you were at your youngest, all right? Uh, well, for some of you, you have started from five years old or at least one year old, all right? Uh, you do not all have copies of the earliest time possible, but that's okay. And uh, upon listening to your uh, biographical sharing, I must say, indeed, development is uh, unique to every one of us. Though generally, there are expectations for certain ages, okay? You have to remember that uh, psychology or even other developmental theories, for that matter, would have had laid already or posited, okay, um, expectations or what we naturally uh, would see from a child who ages uh, one or perhaps who has just been co uh, conceived or I mean given birth, all right? So from birth to adulthood, there are already um, prescribed, all right, or anticipated the task activities, abilities, or capabilities that are expected, okay, of, of a person. But like I have said earlier, we may vary, all right? We have our own pace. We may not really develop uh, in the same manner at the same point in time, but uh, at least within a period in that time, if we are on the normal range of development, then uh, we might at least be in the scope. All right, but not necessarily uh, developing on a particular phase, same with another person. All right, so put that in mind. Well, um, it's also surprising that um, you, you already have uh, a clear awareness of what you were able to do when you were still that young because your parents have been telling you so. And uh, you might have noticed that some of you at age one were already able to, um, uh, to get up, uh, try to walk, all right, and try to bubble things out. Or, yeah, because bubbling is uh, actually one of the first few things that we try unknowingly when we were kids, all right. And uh, there were also some of you who were at five years old or even earlier than that, who were already able to decipher what's right from wrong. Wow, that's cool. And um, what's also good is that uh, others were already able to develop their language. Though it may have been gradual in process, but uh, hearing from you, uh, by you telling that you are already able to enunciate, or yeah, to enunciate sounds, to blend sounds, Okay, and that's, uh, that's really a cool sign of progress when you were developing from that point in time, all right? And uh, today, we are gonna see, okay, whether your sharing fits in, okay, to that uh, parameter or to that bounds of develop development expected for a child who ages that young or, uh, or that early, at five years old, at six years old, at three, at two, at one, all right, we'll see whether your accounts or even your recounting, okay, would fit or whether you have advanced or whether you were late, all right, but it's okay. You don't have to bother if, for example, you will encounter that uh, you were late, okay, if it reveals later on that, uh, oh, I supposed to have had this uh, ability as early as three, but I had it at four. Okay, that would be okay because like I have said, 
that boils down to the fact that our pace of development would vary and we are unique in terms of that all right so let's get going okay so here now are the stages and the, there are particular labels to that all right so the first one like uh, you can see now is infancy and early childhood and that usually ranges from zero to five years old when is the zero all right as soon as you were born out of this world the very time all right that you were out from the womb of your mom then that's already the count of it all right so from that point in time up to your five years old these were supposed to, the, to be the things all right that uh, are expected of you okay so learning to coordinate motor skills like walking okay there already has been attempt in any of those years so it may be at three it may be at two it may be at one that would be okay okay so instead of drinking milk as the only source of food you are actually now able and capable of eating solid foods all right so we are no longer just very dependent on uh, our breastfeeding all right or even our how do you call this um, our bottles our breast milk bottles but instead we can already have a taste all right we can start tasting already solid foods or we can actually even uh, take them in all right and of course at infancy and early childhood you are also already able to talk all right but you're talking definitely uh, would start not with the um, clear words or not with um, straight structures but definitely we all have started babbling all right uh, we might have started um, by saying mm, all right or perhaps when we are in pain we would have uh, to produce sounds all right to to notify our guardians or our parents that we are actually feeling irritable or uncomfortable at that moment or perhaps we were already trying to say mama all right or perhaps papa things like this and uh, there are uh, other how do you call this development when it comes to our ability to talk already it starts with us bubbling all right until we were already able to blend at least uh sounds and then eventually we we're able to say a word like mom mama or dad or dada or papa all right so that is what is expected of you in infancy and early childhood now what else you are also able to control all right You're, you already have this a uh, certain power of controlling when to eliminate body waste so what does this mean so this is a moment in time when uh, you guys can already um, determine when is it the right time for you to defecate all right and you are able to differentiate sex differences and even develop sexual modesty all right so in here uh, the controlling would be how do you call this uh, already natural of you all right well before you might just uh, in any time of the day just poop around okay or perhaps in your pampers yeah uh, but in here you already have like uh, the ability to convey all right to your parent or to your mom that you are about to po uh, to yeah to pee or even to poop all right so that's what you're capable of doing and of course to differentiate sex differences you know already what uh, what is the difference between a boy and a, and a girl well with the guy with the guidance of your parent uh, he or she would tell to you how they are different all right so physically it may start with uh, some physical attributes that a girl has over attributes that uh, only a man has uh, stuff like that all right and of course uh, sexual modesty is already being uh, developed at this early point in time perhaps uh, four to five years old all right because we begin to have that consciousness already now we move on to middle childhood so that's already when you are six to twelve years old all right so that's the span of our middle childhood 
you are already learning the physical skills here. Physical skills that are necessary for ordinary games and how to get along with other children of the same age. All right. So you already uh, are within the bounds of uh, play age. Okay. And uh, not just an ordinary toy stage, just like when you were younger, but uh, here you can already be able to share all right ordinary games with other children and uh, uh, as soon as uh, you're with them you can also ma manipulate on some physical activities that would necessitate involvement of your body or your hands or your feet all right because of the games so you are also developing fundamental skills here already when it comes to reading writing uh, calculating all right and concepts necessary for everyday living well you might say but uh, the kids nowadays or parents nowadays would as early as four or five involve their kids already into reading programs all right how does that uh, go against this particular stage of development well it does not in any way go against this but uh, there really are parents who would just want okay at an early time open consciousness among their children and that's okay uh, but ideally within the middle childhood that's already when okay when reading skills writing skills or simple mathematics okay should okay should already be at least uh, a skill okay that the child is able to do all right or the child is able to perform okay so other than that the child at the middle childhood is also able to already develop conscience all right or she or he has already a sense of morality and values building a wholesome attitude towards oneself and achieving personal independence so look at that at 6 to 12 years old at middle childhood you you are not just already conscious about uh, the world uh, how to call this circulating again around you or it's no longer that uh, period in time when when you think as if the world just revolves around you because uh, whether we like it or not that is our uh, nature when we were younger and we call that centrism we we think as if we're this and this is the world and everything whatever you say they will give it to you whatever you ask for it's gonna be given to you and whenever you cry because of one thing that you really desire people around you will do everything else just to give you that and to stop you from crying so that's uh that's the the, the concept but in here in middle childhood you are already um, having that consciousness, all right? So you begin to, to have a sense of right and wrong, okay? It's just surprising because uh, others of you were early. And this may be attributed to the kind of breeding and the kind of parenting that our parents have addressed to us also when we were younger. That's why uh, for some of you at early childhood, you know already what's wrong. Uh, from what's right but it's supposed to be in the middle childhood that that is optimally developed all right or at least early developed okay so you already have a sense of uh, morality and you get to be uh, how do you call this um, uh, um, you, you already get to facilitate in yourself what is it meaning to be uh, how do you call this guilty all right because of conscience okay so maybe uh, at this point in time when you are uh, hurting a playmate or perhaps when you are about to hurt a playmate then you get to be reminded that you're not supposed to let that happen otherwise at the end of the day you will be punished okay so you already have that um, uh, building you start building an attitude inside you or a value inside you that will eventually make you morally upright, okay? 
Now we move on to a span in time when you were 13 to 18 years old. And this is critically, uh, well, the, the teenage years, all right, or the adolescence period. And you guys were adolescents during these times. So what, what is it that you were doing at those times? Well, you were more of achieving, all right? So you're kind of proving uh, how much you can do in school, how much you can do in a game, how much you can win, all right? You are actually at the point of proving yourselves at the adolescent years. You show off, all right? You get to discover more of what you're capable of doing. And of course, here is already the start of, uh, well, relationships with both sexes okay it could be with friends of male with friends of female so you already um are aware of your role okay of your gender role in the community as well and in here there starts the emotional independence all right uh, that's the reason why uh during this critical period in time we just don't already, how do you call this, establish, all right, a, a relationship with both sexes, but uh, we may already entertain the idea, okay, of uh, establishing a relationship with the other sex, okay? So here, there's already that idea of preparing for marriage and family life, all right? Oh, that's too early, huh? I never had that thought and an economic career of course during this time you already anticipate okay what you want to become in the future what the job or what employment should you be after you graduate from school all right and uh, whether we like it or not this is a point in time when even if it frustrates us okay this is when pimples would just come showing up uh, bursting all right so there's kind of a breakout in our physical appearance uh, the things that we don't like seeing but they are just uh, showing up and uh, however okay it is also a, a point in time when even if it frustrates how we see ourselves because of the physical changes that are happening we begin to accept our physical structure our physical looks all right that's during the stage and of course we already acquire values and ethical system to guide our behavior. Well, if we go to the middle age, if we go back rather, we already are starting, all right, uh, to develop our sense of morality. But in here, we are already into a system, an ethical system of uh, really looking after our behavior, okay, and desiring to become socially acceptable and socially responsible so that we behave in a manner that it won't disturb all right the the circle to where we are or it won't harm ourselves while we are in a circle of people so that is what it means in the last point under adolescence okay and the fourth is early adulthood all right or the late teens or early 20s or 30s okay so this is um how do you call this a stage or a time of establishing personal and economic independence well because of uh, the transition no uh, with our educational uh, system with your batch or with your generation now it's kind of late all right it's kind of late when you are already establishing your economic independence or even your career development but uh, well definitely uh, during this stage you just don't uh, concern yourself with career or with getting a stable job or perhaps uh, doing savings uh, or investing for a home or a car or a property things like that um, but you also at this uh, stage in time you are already selecting your partner in life all right it may not necessarily be how do you call this that early on the 20s but it could be ranging from 20s to uh, 30s 
and you you already learn to live with someone in an intimate way all right so that's ideally the point intimate way because you are about to establish family life you are about to uh, design your own home with someone who you who you can be with forever and definitely it is already the point in time when you are open to the idea of building your own family and that means you are now ready to bear and rear your children all right so that's during our early adulthood or otherwise called as the late teens or early 20s or 30s so try to look at your age right now you still don't fall uh, under this no ideally or technically so please don't be in a hurry or if perhaps you have had it earlier then it's not yet late to make up for a better future all right so we have middle adulthood which lasts from uh, 40 to 60 years old so this is already a time of expanding personal and social involvement and responsibility so you are already out of the bounds of your uh, personal self but instead there are already other people you want to uh, share the sphere of influence or even then the sphere of knowledge with okay that is the reason why you get to involve yourselves in social responsibilities and what usually are the social responsibilities that you involve yourself with? That's uh, maybe as assisting the next generation in becoming competent and mature individuals. So you get to share already uh, uh, secrets for success stories or maybe um, guide someone to do necessary steps in order for him or for her to also experience promotion. Okay. Or perhaps you already uh, reach that point when uh, because of feeling competent already or because of the competitiveness that uh, you have built for yourself uh, during the past years okay in this middle adulthood you already train someone okay uh, the possibility of um, letting that person also experience or acquire that sense of competitiveness that you have okay because at this point in time you don't uh, already wrestle with uh, how do you call this um, uh, proving yourself proving your ego or how do you call this overstaging your uh, how do you call this your abilities or even upstaging others what you want here already is to maintain uh, satisfaction okay when it comes to your personal career and you are ready to already influence like I have said others to become like you and here is the stage where we are all um, looking forward to I suppose uh, except for those um, who are afraid of retirement because of uh, no no savings enough okay then that's another story well because in here it's time to adjust all right to decreasing strength and health uh, this is already a moment in time when uh, you get to experience all right losing out the strength and even the drive that you normally had when you were still young or younger okay so here what you are concerned more of is your health is um to maintain how you could still live through the next years and uh, enjoy the next uh, laps of life okay and uh, it's also a moment in time when uh, you get to sit down or yeah not just with your spouse or perhaps with uh, your grandchildren or even your children and talk about life in the past you share them your experiences your life stories your most unforgettable uh, moments in your career in your marriage life in your relationship with them things like that so there's this life review session in the late adulthood stage 
And uh, like I have said, this is a moment of retirement. Retirement from work. Okay. And this is no longer doing the usual things that you have been doing when you were still employed. Or when you still have the, the optimal strengths. And it could also be, alright, for others who are still up and strong, even at the, at the late adulthood age, they can still be able to adjust to new social roles. There are those who would venture on, uh, how do you call this? Um, my memory. Orphan, orphanage, alright? Uh, they would um, offer services. Not just for orphanage, but uh, even for other social obligations. They can uh, volunteer as secretary, as a leader of an organization they could create with other retirees such as their kind. Okay, things like that. That's new social roles for late adults, all right, in this certain phase. All right. So today, we move on to developmental task vis-a-vis -vis the developmental stage. So it's kind of, um, uh, here are specifics according to Javi Gerst in 1950. And developmental task is introduced to him accordingly, okay? Which means that uh, task which come up in a social context during the course of time of a human being. So this uh, social uh, context that uh, are being or that is being emphasized by Javi Gerst would tell what abilities okay or what developmental task would uh, a child or would a middle child would an adult would an adolescent be able to do in this type of context okay so this developmental task has um, become an important theoretical approach in, of course, educational science. And the Havigers himself suggested that all individuals pass through a series of developmental stage from infancy to old age, each compromising a series of developmental tasks. That should not be compromising, but comprising. Please uh, do some correction on that. So he defined developmental task as a task that occurs in an individual's life at or about a certain time successful accomplishments of which leads to his happiness and success with later task while failure leads to unhappiness in the person rejection by society and difficulty with later task so it's kind of saying that uh, if uh, if a person okay according to the developmental task of Havigers, if a person would achieve at an early age the task expected of him he is expected to become happier and content when he goes to the other level because he was able to overcome it successfully at that early stage already. On the other hand, if the person fails at that early point and then fails again, then it actually does a domino effect. Okay, The person may actually develop uh, a, how do you call this, sadness inside him and then eventually there would uh, rise up some other consequences such as being rejected by the society. And then later on, the very, uh, how do you call this, eventful um, effect would be he or she will already have a difficult time coping with some other task ahead of him. All right? So here, at early childhood, okay, we get back. At early childhood, these are the tasks. You learn how to walk, you learn how to take solid foods, you learn how to talk. Okay, these are actually uh, a summary of uh, what I have just told you earlier. But we'll see later on as we progress. And so that's for middle childhood. Yeah, you get to read all these, okay? These are more, how do you call this, specific and uh, more narrative than that I have presented earlier. So this is for adolescence and early adulthood. So there you go. And of course for middle age and our old age. Alright. So 
on the other hand okay if that is according to um Havigers, on the other hand we have uh, sun trucks stages of development and developmental tasks described uh, uh eight stages all right and the same as Havigers, every developmental stage there is an expected developmental task so let's see the stages according to sun trucks okay so at the prenatal period it is the progress before birth there are three phases of prenatal development all right so that would be the germinal stage it's the first two weeks it's when conception or implant implantation formation happens already in the placenta excuse me and then follows the uh, the embryonic stage this is already the two weeks and uh, to two months all right when formation of vital organs and systems happen inside the fetus okay and here is already the fetal stage uh, when uh, two months to birth bodily growth continues and then movement capability begins and brain cells multiply age of viability so that is already from two months to birth when optimal development is happening inside the womb for the baby okay so at one year old there is already a change from plump baby to learner okay i mean to leaner rather or more muscular toddlers so here a one-year-old begins to walk and talk okay he or she has the ability for passive language okay better understanding of what's being said okay he or she also has a tentative sense of independence and determined explorer okay well because uh, the child at this stage would uh, would try to get curious of stuff around and even of uh, happenings around him or her all right so what about two years old so a two-year-old would begin to communicate verbally can usually speak in three to four sentences and uh, famous for negative behavior okay why negative behavior well because the child would already be reacting okay and uh, would want things that he wants okay black is black white is white so here the the child will already play side by side with other children but not actively play with them um, because they are they are still vulnerable okay and definitely this is the stage when the child would the model from people that he is exposed to so he is actually expected to become great imitator so be careful at this stage when you have a child be careful what you have to show because the tendency is he might just be photocopying or reproducing the same behavior that you are actually modeling and early childhood okay according to Santrox, that's three to five years so three to five years old what does a three-year-old do of course the one thing to be just like parents uh, there is already that uh, sense of uh, wanting to establish uh, authority okay so vocabulary and pronunciation continue to expand here is a, uh, a time when a child would also climb the stairs with alternating feet and he or she can briefly stand on one foot already but not uh, yet on a long sp uh, span of time okay it's just an attempt and a try and then eventually a fallback okay and then the four-year-old would uh, already be able to make sentences a little complex okay he or she is already able to speak well enough for strangers to understand so now you just uh, don't um, how do you call this get puzzled about what the child really wants to tell about to speak about because the child at this point in time, according to Santrock, would already be able to speak that others may understand without you already explaining for him. Okay, so imagination is already becoming vivid. So there is already a clear, uh, how do you call this, uh, formation of thoughts and concepts in the mind of a child because of the experiences that he is actually into 
or because of uh, the stuff that you present to him at home or wherever the child is okay so look at children now because of the advent of technology and because uh, they already have the freedom to browse and uh, see whatever they they are open to seeing then uh, they really are just so curious about so many things okay making them really vivid in terms of imagination um, well there is actually already a drawn line between reality and imaginary uh, stuff when it comes to this stage all right but it's often indistinct okay it's not yet that um, that very clear okay you cannot yet uh, convince a child that this is already a reality but uh, you just have to keep explaining uh, that this is the truth but you don't uh, how do you call this misinform the child otherwise that will have uh, a drawback later when he grows up even if he or she still does not understand it at this point you have to tell still that this is the truth okay and definitely uh, this is also a stage when uh, the child would develop fear okay common fears like uh, if you tell to a child there's a mumu inside the how do you call this inside the comfort room or when the lights are off then that will develop in a child the sense of fear whenever lights are off or whenever he or she might be associated with comfort rooms so be careful what you uh, what you introduce a child okay when it comes to stuff about uh, tickling his or her fear okay like imaginary characters okay also with what they what they watch they would tend to associate it with places okay or with the with normal stuff happening inside the home because of what they watch and because of their vivid imagination they will really come to a point of uh, addressing as if what they had in in the movie or in the show seem to be represented in the real world okay that's why again like we have said earlier it's still indistinct to decipher truth from imagination or from you know uh, non-real stuff all right and five years old so here are kids who can already hop on one foot and skip all right so there are already muscular um, how do you call this stabilization when it comes to the physique of the child that's why he already can do this okay and can accurately copy figure already all right so may, may begin to sketch uh, may also begin to read and socialize with other children within their age all right so you're a little more how do you call this uh, playful but not just solely on your own and with your toys now but with other kids and uh, we have middle and late childhood that's 6 to 12 years old so in here both large and small muscles are well developed already okay so if that is the case then you are, are also developing more complex uh, motor skills so a little heavier uh, stuff you can already carry you can run with it okay because your muscular uh, build is already developed fully okay and from independent activities to same-sex group activities okay you you get the experience already not just being with yourself but uh, with as much as um how do you call this uh, many of your peers but definitely it starts with same sex group okay and then there's already acceptance by peers and parental approval is of course is still important all right so even if uh, you already try to establish how it is to be accepted by friends and not to be ignored by them all right you remember when you were kids uh, there would be a uh, kind of uh, stuff like oh, hindi ka namin bati oh ito lang yung mga bati natin these are just our friends or oh, you are an outcast you better go away they will shoo you away and that in the middle childhood would actually hurt you already because what you want to happen in this stage in life according accordingly is um to be accepted to feel the belongingness all right and definitely the most important part here is parental approval still being important okay 
No, no matter what your friends or what the, your peers might tell about you, you still would want to listen to what your parents would tell because to you, that is the truth and that is what is valid. And so their approval. Okay. You try to compare how these two developmental um, perspectives differ according to stages. Okay. And in adolescence here, you are 13 to 18 years old. All right. This is a traumatic life stage for child and parent. Okay. Yeah, really. I think so. Even at this very sp uh, stage in my life, uh, when I still uh, am not, uh, how do you call this, not really living in by the parent role yet because uh, I'm still conceiving right now, I already anticipate of stuff that would happen or that might challenge us as well when we, when we, you know, when we reach this point of rearing a child at that age. You know, because it's, we have had it experience ourselves and uh, well if it may not happen to us thanks to you know to divine guidance but for others for other children or other adolescents like our age before things were just too early for them and it's really tra traumatic okay you know because this is already a stage of puberty and you kind of what if okay what if my child would go get along with the other sex and then eventually this and that and so on and so forth okay but uh, yeah definitely for a child at this adolescence period uh, that's when puberty occurs all right so what they're so conscious about is their looks okay how they appear beautiful how they are they appear appealing good all right and of course they you know because they are already establishing an identity and that they would want it to feel good about themselves and that people to really feel the same with them that they are good looking they are handsome pretty and so on and so forth and they are pleasing okay and uh, because of this stage when there are al already conflicts as well you know uh, conflicts with friends or with uh, yeah with peers then confrontations with authority might as well happen here Authority may not only be representative of uh, school uh, teachers, but it may as well be the parents themselves. So here is already uh, a checking of uh, how the child behaves vis-a-vis -vis standards, vis-a-vis -vis rules, or vis-a-vis -vis, um, yeah, patakaran, house rules, okay, or even advices given by parents. And early adulthood is from 19 to 29 years old. So here, there's physical development already that is said to be complete. And emotional maturation continue to develop, all right? Because usually, here at this point, it's learning to accept responsibility. You are already able to accept criticism. Well, at adolescence, uh, you, you wanted to please people. But in here, it doesn't necessarily feel important already whether or not you please people. How you look is how you look, and that's valid for you. You can always validate it yourself in this stage. All right? And usually, you know already how to profit from errors, meaning you learn from what your mistakes are in the past. You already get to know what best to do after you have failed on something and uh, what to avoid in order not to repeat the same error, okay? And here, uh, socially related from age-related peer groups to people with similar interests. We get to uh, be with peers who share same interests with us. Or we choose our friends because we know that they help us with our interests or with the things that we are capable of doing, all right? And that's the deal in this particular stage. And uh, yeah, the last is, uh, I'm sorry, the second to the last, it's middle adulthood. So this is from 30 years old to 60 years old. Well, physical changes begin to occur, like hair begins to thin, and then it becomes gray. So wrinkles appear already. If, if before, it would be pimples, all right, in the adolescent stage. Here, there are already wrinkles. Okay, so you, you tend to... I had to call this search for 
a clearer eyeglasses because you really just can't see the tiny things already all right so your vision is uh, gradually uh, how do you call this defective and even your hearing you could hardly hear people already well for others they have still that um, loud and clear reception but for some or for most they would have this tendency at this age all right muscles lose tone already and uh, your make your main concerns now are definitely not about you you reach that uh, level in your life when you are um how do you call this self-actualized already and we'll get to see that uh in another theory we will discuss uh in this uh, course as we go through all right self-actualization yes so that means you are already into um, the next generation as your priority and as your concern you think about your children your grandchildren their future and what's probably good for them okay and definitely uh, your health okay your health is a primary uh, priority as well okay um, here, job security, aging parents, and fear of aging, love and acceptance still take a major role. Of course, um, even if we reach that point when uh, our concerns are no longer purely and solidarity ours or about ourselves, still we have concerns about these things, okay? Like, let's say, for example, uh, at this stage, we still have uh, parents leaving. Okay, we get to think about them, okay, we also would uh, have that same fear developing inside us that what about when we become old like them, okay, and so many things. Still, about love and acceptance, yeah, that takes a major oh. role. You still want to be accepted, you still want to be loved, okay. After all, you've started like that. You wanted that feeling. And here now is late adulthood. That's 61 years old and above. This is the fastest growing age of bracket of society. It's already when physical deterioration happens. Memory problems, okay, they begin just uh, coming up. And you fail to remember people even. You fail to remember instances or experiences. But, uh, well, you could recall, but uh, the grasp or the hold in memory would sometimes fail you, but uh, they, they may be activated uh, by some other stimulus, okay? And here, you're coping with uh, some retirement and forms already of entertainment, yeah. And you're very concerned with health and finances. And the saddest part is many would become depressed that's why suicide rate is high during this late adulthood because there are those who did not prepare for it or perhaps uh, unfortunately are not really prepared okay when it comes to being confronted already with health issues and they have no savings or they retired but uh, they really did not spare for you know insurance things like that okay so you now compare Javi Girls and Sandrock's uh, developmental stage. Okay, you see how they differ when it comes to the developmental task that they have presented or even the bracketing of the stages that they have. Okay, and uh, that's it for our lesson for today. I hope you guys have uh, recalled, okay, or have anticipated at least what you are probably becoming or what you are prob probably doing in the next laps of your years until you until you live all right or that's all for us to to look forward to and i hope that um, instead of developing in you the fear and the responsibility or even the burden because of all these that have been presented i hope that uh, you feel more of the excitement and even the thrill to live uh, longer and uh, to, to unfold all right, these milestones in your life as well. And uh, more than that, uh, I wish that uh, in every next stage of your life, you too get to experience the best of it and that uh, you too would be able to overcome 
the, um, the challenges or even the predicaments that might come along your way because uh, in every like Javi Gers would have said again if we failed in a certain stage it will eventually cause hardship for our part when we reach another stage so as much as possible we have to be very extra careful and we have to be cautious about how we deal with our present uh, circumstances so that we don't regret at a later stage in our lives and so that we get to enjoy optimally what life really has to offer because life is beautiful all right so i hope you guys have uh, been inspired with this topic and i hope to hear from you from your reflective videos thank you and goodbye